Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly. Ah. And welcome to Podcast 1.5. We're going to talk about fission, splitting apart, fusion, coming together, the use of radioactivity, and half-life. So let's hop to it. All right. Nuclear fission. Fission is the splitting of a heavy nucleus into two or more lighter nuclei and some number of neutrons by a shooting neutron. So what happens is, here's a big old nucleus. I'm going to shoot it with a neutron, and it's going to split into, it's going to join together, and split into two smaller nuclei that we pay attention to and a number of neutrons. So you always make neutrons. So notice, big old guy, smaller, smaller, some neutrons. Big old guy. Smaller, smaller, some neutrons. And notice you shoot it and hit it with a neutron. Big old guy. Smaller, smaller, some neutrons. And maybe some beta particles. Fusion reactions. Fusion is a combination of light nuclei to form heavier nuclei. A major fusion reaction occurs continuously in the sun and other stars. So little guy, bigger guy. This process occurs in several steps, but this is basically it. Four little guys make a bigger guy. Fission is easy, but fusion is tough. If you want to shoot a neutron at a nucleus, there's no repulsion. Nucleus is positive. Neutron is neutral. That means there's no repulsion. Fusion, you shoot a positive nucleus at another positive nucleus. Well, guess what? They repel each other because like charges repel. Like having Connor and Caitlin be lab partners. They hate each other so much, they're fighting all the time. Medical uses of nuclear. Power generation. So you know how we want to have our battery last and your phone battery lasts maybe 24 hours. Depends on how much you're playing around on Pinterest or whatever the, what is Flappy Bird or whatever it is you guys are playing. So power generation, plutonium-238, is used to power pacemakers because it lasts longer. So you only have to change it every, I don't know, 7 or 10 years. That way you don't have to have major heart surgery all of the time. The other thing is medical tracers. So if I have a solution, hey, that's an IV bag, that's radioactive, and you inject it into somebody's arm, what happens is you can tell where it goes with little detectors to see if you inject something and if it's got a big pool of whatever it is right here, then that means your stomach is where all of the um, tracer goes. And you can tell, hey, there's a tumor there. Medical application. Positron emission topography. That's a PET scan. A PET scan detects abnormalities in living tissues without disrupting the tissue. So this might be a healthy brain. All right, so you can see all the stuff that's going on, and that would do it. So positron, this is a positron. You don't really need to know that much about it. But a healthy brain that's different, and you can see with the radioactivity, the positrons emit different things. You can see that one brain is good, and then there's the other brain. Cancer treatment. Cancer cells equal uncontrolled growth. And if you have uncontrolled growth, you need extra nutrients. So cancer cells require more and more and more and more nutrients. So if you send radioactive nutrients that will destroy the DNA, then you will be able to kill the cancer before the patient, which is weird. So what's really happening is you're poisoning the cancer cells. So I have cancer, and I have person. When you do this radiation, both of them, you're killing both of them. And it, it really is. And what happens is, as soon as this one's dead, then you stop. Ah! So that you're no longer killing this person, and they're going to recover. But if this person dies before the cancer cells, then that's sad for everybody. Engineering, thickness control. So if I have a radioactive source, and it goes, choo, 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 and I have my little detector. I'll make my detector a circle. I can tell, as it tapers off, this detector will go click, 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 click. And I can tell this is the thin spot in the wall or in the pipe or whatever it is. So it can determine thickness control and detect leaks. So if you have like these giant pipes in your front yard, you don't want to dig up the entire thing looking for the leak. So you send radioactive water or sewage or whatever it is, and then you can measure where the radiation comes out, and that'll tell you where the leak is. And then power generation. I hope you know there's nuclear power plants. Booming means bombs. And the bombs do exist. Hopefully we don't drop them very often. 
archaeological, living things have the same ratio of carbon-14 as the atmosphere. Living things. The instant things die, they start to lose their carbon-14 in a half-life manner. Half-life manner means that, notice 100 to 50, that took this amount of time. That same amount of time would cut it in half again, so 50 goes to 25. So notice this time interval right here cuts it in half, this time interval cuts it in half, this time interval cuts it in half. And eventually you get down here and your math teacher would say it never gets to zero, but it does because if you have one nucleus, that nucleus is either there or it's not. You can't do that. So it's basic time and it divides, and so let's take a look at it. An isotope of radon has a half-life of 36 minutes. What fraction of the original quantity of actinium, whoops, that should be radon. I don't know why that says that. Radon remains after 360 minutes. So what happens is, what fraction, so my first fraction is 1. So this would be amount, and this would be time. So at time 0, I have 1. I have half of it at 36. I have a quarter at 72. I have an eighth at, I'm going to go to my calculator, I don't know, 108. I'm not there yet. I have a sixteenth at 144. I have a 32nd at 58, 180. Woo, I'm going to keep going. I have a 64th at, oh, okay, I'm giving up now, 180 plus 36, shame on me. 216 and 128 oh. at 252. Why did I make it so long? And I have, I gotta go to 360, man. I have one 256 at 288. 324 is 1 over 512. And then at 360, I have 1 over 1,024. I'm not going to do 1080. That's just too much stuff to do. But there is a better way to do it. So you can figure out how many half-lives there is. This is the shorter way. You want to figure out how many 36 minutes are in 1080. So 1080 divided by 36. So clear. 1080 divided 36 is 30. So that's 30 half-lives. So... 30 half-lives. So what that means is I'm going to take 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half to the 30th power. Okay. So if you notice, this took 1, 2, well, I'm sorry, not 1. That first one was not a half-life. This took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 half-lives. So if I took 1 half, or 0.5, raised to the 10th, that would give me 0 0.00009, which would be 1,024. After 26 days, a radioactive material is found to have 1 16th of its original activity. What is the half-life of the radioactive isotope present? So I start out at time 0, and then amount. So I have, um, whoops, I have 1, then I have a half, then I have a fourth, then I have an eighth, then I have a sixteenth, and then it's 26 days, 26. 82, 78, uh, 104, 104 days. You just each one of those, that's how long it takes. What is the half? Oh, what is the half? Ooh, wait a minute. After 26 days, ooh, that's not what I want to do. Helps if I read the question. After 26 days, it did this. So this took one half life, two half life, three half lives, four half lives. So it took four half lives, four half lives to do that. And then four half-lives equals 26 days. So one half-life, so half-life equals 26 over 4. Sorry about that. 26 divided 4 is 6.5. 6.5 days equals the half-life. Review. Fission equals splitting. Uh, fusion equals sticking. Radioactivity has many specific uses to know, and half-life calculations are fun, fun, fun. Toodles.